Imagine this scenario. You walk into your office, somebody w- runs up to you and said, we can't access any of our computers. What do we do? Do you have a disaster recovery plan? Do you know who to contact for that plan? Do you even know what to do in that situation? Or are you just shooting from the hip? These are important questions. Last week we talked about business continuity. This week we're going to talk a little bit about disaster recovery planning and what it means for your business. So let's talk about it. Welcome back. I'm Chris Burns from Techie Gurus. Thank you for joining me on this journey of going through business continuity planning, disaster recovery planning, and we might even talk a little bit about incident response planning, but not this week. Last week, we talked about business continuity planning. Now, the week before that, we kind of covered between like what is in a disaster recovery plan versus a business continuity plan. So I want to revisit that. The term disaster recovery plan and business continuity plan, they are very similar, but they're quite different. Uh, A DRP details how the business is going to return its IT operations to full use after disaster, while business continuity plan outlines the business and how it's going to keep operating during the disaster. Those are two distinct things that we have to understand. So in simple terms, a business continuity plan focuses on keeping operations during interruptions. So whether it's a fire, uh, electricity down, or power down, uh, internet out, things like that. A subset of that plan is the DRP or the disaster recovery plan. And that focuses on recovering from interruptions. So if we lose our power, if we lose our internet, if our building catches on fire, how do we recover from those interruptions? The business continuity plan is how do we operate during that interruption? So hope that's a, that's a very important distinction that we have to understand. And Another way to look at this is a DRP might call for a remote backup server to store copies of the critical data so that we can recover them, while a BC or business continuity plan might actually have a backup of the entire production environment that mirrors it in a different location that we can use as soon as the disaster hits. So the backup system provides barely noticeable switchover to keep operations running. That's where BCP is and that's where DR is. So let's go through and cover the five elements to a good disaster recovery plan. So the five key elements of any good disaster recovery plan are going to be, number one, know your threats. Number two, know your assets. Number three, define your RTO and RPO. Number four, set up disaster recovery sites. And number five, test, improve, test, improve, and repeat. So number one, we have to know the threats. So we have to understand the business. We have to understand the region the, the that the business is in, the industry, you know. If you have natural disasters that can hit your area, be it hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, things like that. Do you have good internet? Does it go out a lot? Do you have good power in your area? Does it go out a lot? These are the things we have to understand that have to go into your business continuity plan. And then depending on what type of business you are, what threat actors are out there that are going to attack you? Because we have to understand what their methods are to understand like how we should plan to recover just in case something like that happens. Number two is you have to know your assets. This is critical. This is hardware assets. This is processes. This is procedures. This is people. This is servers and desktops, routers, switches, everything that you have in your business that keeps your business running. Number three, define your RTO and your RPO is so important. RTO, uh, recovery time objective, it determines what kind of business downtime can we sustain. So there's something called maximum tolerable downtime. I've talked about that before, but this specifically is all about recovery time objective. How much downtime can we sustain? If we're an e-commerce site, obviously we can't sustain very much downtime. However, maybe an accounting firm can do a day or two without it really impacting them overall and they can recover to their to their normal operations. RPO or recovery point objective is how how old can files be in the organization to that must be recovered from backup storage. So if it's a four hour RPO, we have to have a backup every four hours. We have to be able to recover from four hours ago. So this is something we have to make sure that we have defined for the plan. And then number four is set up recovery sites. So what type of business are you? Do you need a cold site, which doesn't have anything running, basically just sits there. Do you need 
a warm backup site that might be some sort of redundant operational unit in a data center someplace. Um, maybe it's a second server that you can fire up and can restore to and things like that. Or do you need a hot site, which is a complete, basically a production of, reproduction of your production data. Like maybe it's lagging by the four hours or whatever, but you can just flip over to that and keep going. So these are important things we have to understand. How much money you lose per hour is really going to dictate that. So understanding like your actual costs and revenue stream is, is critically important. And like, what are, you, what are your losses? So this is a risk management exercise, a little bit more than what we want to get into. But if we move on to number five, it's test your backups and your restoration services. We have to test the stuff. We have to we have to test it, make sure it's working. If it's not working, we have to modify it. We have to test it again, modify, test again, modify. You should be testing your plan at least once a quarter. I would say probably once a month, um, at least for backup and recovery. Maybe not the whole plan is tested every month, but at least the backup and recovery. We have to make sure that we can recover critical systems in a matter that matches your RTO and your RPO. So these are the critical elements of a disaster recovery plan. How do we actually go through and kind of put that plan together at a high level? And that's what we'll talk about next. All right, so let's talk about seven steps with creating your disaster recovery plan. And I'll put those up here. But number one, let's just start, jump into it. Let's conduct a business impact analysis. Now we've probably done this already with your BCP planning. And because the DR plan is part of the BCP, or business continuity plan. I don't want to cover it too much, but basically a business impact analysis is going to help you determine how a disruption can affect your current businesses, functions and processes, um, people, equipment, technology, and physical infrastructure. So this step will, is going to help you calculate the financial impact and operational loss from each of the processes affected. Now, number two, conduct a risk assessment. Now this is kind of important. This kind of goes back to identifying your threats and that's really what it's about. It's about identifying the threats in your business to make sure that we are planning accordingly. So that could be external threats, internal threats, acts of nature, things like that. Number three, we're gonna establish priorities and this is critical. During like the business continuity planning, we talked about priorities a little bit, but this is, this is important. A lot of times people will actually lump things into three tiers. Tier one would be mission critical. Tier two would be like applications you need within 12 to 24 hours. So tier three could be things that you don't need for a couple of days. Could be applications that can wait, you know, things that are just like in the priority list. It's not really all that important that they gets back up and running immediately. So in addition to the data and the information systems, the risk assessment should also focus on communications infrastructure, phones, uh, your strategy, both internal and external. So, how are we going to communicate internally and externally to our people? And then secure access and authorization to critical systems as well. And then reestablishing a, a work environment, you know, a suitable work environment. Number four is ensure adequate resources. It's really important that we invest the capital, the time, and the expertise to make sure that the plan is going to work. So if we go into this with the expectation that we're not going to spend any money, that's not realistic for a recover, disaster recovery plan. There needs to be some sort of capital set aside after doing the business impact analysis to determine like how much can be put aside for resources. And this also includes people. So we need to make sure that we have all of that covered before we move forward. Number five, it's really about establishing where are we going to recover? And we have to choose that recovery method in sites or, or, or just one site. We could choose a data center. We could choose a cloud provider. It could be another building that we own, things like that. So we have to figure out, like, does it need to be a cold site or it's just a place where we can just buy some equipment and dump it there because, you know, we can be down for a couple of days. Does it need to be a warm site where we have the equipment there and we might just have to recover to it, recover, like do like a, a, a take the backups and recover to it. Or does it need to be a hot site where it's literally, you know, one hour, two hour, three hours, four hours behind our production systems. And we're going to flip over to that and we're going to be ready to go. So that's important to understand because the cost structure, hot sites are more expensive, warm sites are less, cold sites are even less. However, the further down the chain you go, the longer it takes to recover. So that's something you have to think about. So that comes back to the business impact analysis and, and, and continuing on. You know, number six, we gotta think beyond the data. You know what, it's not all about data. It could be machines for us to keep our, our business running. It could be something around licenses that we need to understand uh, 
that to get back up and running. Um, anything that's essential to the cogs of our daily business is something that needs to be considered in this plan. Uh, equipment, like maybe you have to have some laptops and desktops set aside. Um, it's not, it's been difficult the last couple of years to get equipment. So if you need to be back up in a day or two, you, you're going to need some equipment sitting there. And if we go to number seven, this is, this is important. We have to test this plan. A lot like I talked about before at least quarterly probably do a little test monthly do a full test quarterly you could do a semi-annual depends on the business or you could do it annually but I would think at the very least for a full test you should be doing it at least quarterly to understand um, where your your gaps are and to fill those gaps and because our businesses change all the time we have to make sure that we update the plan accordingly to the business changes you know I went over this kind of quickly um, with the elements that go into a, a disaster recovery plan and then like seven steps for it. But this is a bigger undertaking than, than what I've even said. So this month I've talked about the business continuity planning, disaster recovery planning inside of that. It's a lot of work. It's something that it's going to take time. I'm making short videos kind of highlighting the, the overall structure of it, but like at the, it's going to take hours and days to complete. So you just need to figure out where to start and you have to start today and then understand that it's going to take time. It's going to take some help probably, but start today so that when a disaster strikes, you're prepared. You're prepared to keep the business running and you're also prepared to recover the, from the disaster to a point in time that is adequate for your business. So if you have any questions, again, comment down below, DM us, call us, Go to our website, techiegurus.com. You can set up you can set up any kind of meeting. We can talk to you. It doesn't have to be a paid engagement. We can have a 15-minute conversation just about like what are the struggles in your business. I'm interested in knowing. Until next time, stay cyber safe.